Alrighty, in the latest example of the irrelevance of American foreign policy, uh, Congress is trying to pass another bill sanctioning Assad Syria. They're going to sanction him harder this time because no matter what they've done for now over 10 years, what is it, 12 years since they launched the coup, the CIA coup against Assad, he's still in office, he's still going strong, and uh, pretty much everyone across the face of the planet has given up on overthrowing him, except for the U.S. Congress and, I guess, the CIA. But uh, his Arab neighbors, who hated him for so long, who kicked him out of the Arab League, who, who maintained, along with the United States, for longer uh, than it was ever viable, Assad must go, long after it was clear that the um, Saudi and CIA-backed jihadis uh, were being routed by Assad, um, long after the false flags failed, the Saudis and the other Sunni Arabs, um, all of the royals, they maintained Assad must go. Well, guess what? It's over. Assad's back in the Arab League. He's been invited by the king of Saudi Arabia to make an official state visit. They're all good friends again. There is, I mean, there's, there's still, you know, there's a lot, endless unrest in Syria thanks to the CIA, but... Um, there is no serious challenge to overthrow Assad and install some new CIA-backed government. ISIS has been dead and gone for who knows how long. And yet, there is a bipartisan consensus in the U.S. Congress to continue to maintain crippling sanctions on not Assad, because his power is not in question. Assad isn't going anywhere. He's still a relatively young man. He might be in his 50s now. Um, he was in his 40s, but it, this civil war has been going on for, uh, you know, they started it 12 years ago, or no, 13 years ago, right? Because it's 2012. Or was it 2011? Might have been 2011. Um, and uh, he, he has only um, confirmed his position in Syria. So why continue to make his citizens suffer is beyond me. Doesn't make a lick of sense, but this is how the U.S. Congress operates. This is the logic of sanctions. You know, there was a major earthquake in Syria last year. And what was Congress's response? Did they say, you know, hey, I know we've had these sanctions against Syria for 10 years, but maybe we should lighten them a little bit since there was just this earthquake and people, you know, they can't really control that. And it's not their fault that, you know, we don't like uh, their president. Um, so maybe we should allow them to, you know, like buy concrete or import, you know, food aid since uh, their country, was, part of their country was just destroyed, um, you know, in addition to the destruction from all the war and the bombings and everything, um, it was just destroyed by an earthquake. So maybe we should, maybe we should show a little bit of mercy to these people. No. What was their response? They sanctioned Syria even harder. They doubled down and they said, no, 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 we got to, this just shows that we've got them, we've got them uh, on the ropes. We have to finish them off. I mean, I really, there, there's no goal here. What is the goal to try and cause more Syrian people to die? I mean, they're not, they're not killing Assad. I guarantee you, Assad's not, not having to tighten his belt, you know, because he's going hungry. They're even going so far as to um, try and prevent Syrian people from flying out of their country if if we're supposed to believe that assad is this great evil vile dictator shouldn't we want to make it as easy for syrians to escape his oppression as possible for them to get on a plane and you know fly to israel or or fly to jordan or saudi arabia or greece anywhere no you know apparently assad despite being this terrible, evil, awful dictator, wants his people to be able to freely get on an airplane and fly wherever they want. But the U.S. is trying to stop that. They're trying to say any country that allows a Syrian, uh, you know, a plane load of Syrian refugees to land in their country, uh, we're going to sanction you too. So that's the threat here. I guess if, uh, if Saudi Arabia allows Syrian people to fly into their country and land at their airport, the U.S. is just going to stop buying Saudi oil. Is that is that what we're supposed to believe? This is ridiculous. It's impotent, and um, it's a crime against humanity. I mean, that's what the whole 
uh, anti-Assad project has been from the beginning. No matter whether it worked or not, I mean, even if they were able to get rid of Assad, let's say, back in 2013, there still would have been tens of thousands of people who were killed by then, all for the sake of, you know, getting rid of some leader uh, that uh, was marginally, I guess, um, disliked by the CIA. I mean, from what I understand, the whole Syria project, getting rid of Assad, that was part of that was just the U.S. trying to uh, show its loyalty to Saudi Arabia because it was the Sunnis who hated Assad the most, we're supposed to believe. But I, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, and, and there was the whole Qatar Turkey pipeline. You know, Assad wasn't going to prove that. He said, no, I'm not going to let you build an oil pipeline across my country. Um, you know, do the Qataris no longer care about that? I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. What I mean, it's the same thing now with Iran. You know, this is not too long after the Saudis are pretty much making peace with Iran. We're supposed to, part of the reason why the U.S. Um, is supposed to hate Iran is because, well, we're supposed to be friends with Saudi Arabia. And if Iran is the enemy of Saudi Arabia, uh, then they're our enemy too. Well, Iran's no longer an enemy of Saudi Arabia. Syria is no longer an enemy of Saudi Arabia. Israel, it was the same thing. Israel only started becoming anti-Iran in the 90s so that they could cozy up to the Sunni Arabs. Now Israel, which was only anti-Iran uh, to try and suck up to the Sunnis, is now more anti-Iran anti, uh, than the Sunnis. So none of this makes sense. It's all vestigial. It all is not, means nothing. It just shows that these people themselves don't even know why they oppose Assad. It, it's just out of pure, uh, and same thing with Iran, it's just stubbornness. It's they bought into their own propaganda, because of course they never admitted, you know, that there was a um, uh, self-interested, deep, uh, you know, geopolitical reason why they held these policies against, you know, Syria and Iran. You know, they bought into the lie that they opposed Syria and Iran for humanitarian reasons, because they're so uniquely evil. Even though, you know, if you look at it from the perspective of someone, you know, with Western values, um, Syria and Iran have much more in common with us, and their governments are far less brutal than that of uh, Saudi Arabia. If we were to, you know, try and overthrow some regime based purely on principle and our, you know, standing up for our values, it would be Saudi Arabia. Our allies would be Iran and Syria. No, the reason why Iran and Syria... Um, or our enemies and not Saudi Arabia is because Saudi Arabia was an important geopolitical partner because they we had a strong uh, relationship buying their oil. And now this very same Congress, they don't even like oil. They want to abolish the use of fossil fuels. And so when you have all these contradictory policies um, and vestigial policies that have no purpose, you know, whether or not they were good ideas to begin with, I think they were a bad idea to begin with. I think it was a mistake. But even if you thought it was a good idea to begin with, that's all out the window. And so I'd have to imagine this is what a late stage empire looks like. You've got all they've got all these irons in the fire. They've got all these hands, um, left hands, uh, right hands. Who knows how many hands on each side? How many left hands are there? How many right hands are there? And they're all doing different things. They're all working against each other. And they're all very passionate about what they're doing. They think, oh, no, no, we're, we're doing the right thing. It's nonsense, all of it. So with that said, I hope that the uh, Syrian people are on the road to recovery. I hope that gov other governments are not deterred by the actions of my government. Um, and uh, I would like to see that you know society get back on track, you know, on back onto the road to prosperity. Um, we all would be much better off. Think about what a better place, um, the, you know, not, not just Syria, but the world would be if we hadn't just spent over a decade destroying a major country in the Middle East. Think of all the costs of that to humanity. Think of all the people, good people, who have been displaced, um, who have now desta who are you know destabilizing Europe because they're fish out of water. Um, think of all the people who are not Syrians who just use the cover of the Syrian uh, migrant crisis uh, to hop on a boat from Libya um, and land, uh, you know, on the beaches of Calabria.
made their way up to Germany. Um, you know, started raping young German girls. All this pain, all this devastation felt uh, across the Middle East and Europe. All the fault of the United States. Every single bit of it. And for admitting that, you know, I'm considered anti-American, even though I would just like my country to be a better place. I would like it not to be run by insane maniacs. I would like it to live up to the uh, <laughs> to the uh, the message of its own propaganda. I wish our propaganda was true. If it was true, my government wouldn't do all these terrible things. It wouldn't kill hundreds of thousands or, you know, cumulatively over the past few decades, millions of people. So, with all that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.